there guys and welcome back to another video from Frog Lane Studio. So in last week's episode we covered light scratches and painting on the battle damage on the armour. In this week's episode we're going to be looking at deep battle damage, heavy battle damage, so things like bullet marks and deep gouges in the armour. Now this doesn't just need to be applied to Space Marines, it can be applied to any of your models, whether they be vehicles, actual figures or even down to scenery. Also, before we get started, I just want to make sure that you have clicked that like button, subscribed and turned on the bell notification so that you don't miss out on any of the stuff that we're doing. So before we get started then, in terms of making these bullets, marks and gouges, you're going to need a scalpel blade. And then also I've got here a 1mm and also a 2mm drill bit. Those are for the different sizes of the bullet marks. The other thing then of course you're going to need is your model. Now I'm going to be working primarily on the shoulder pad and the top part here. This is just so that you can see what's going on. But I mean you can put these scratches and scrages wherever you want to. So I'm going to start off with these gouges. Now for the gouges you're going to need your scalpel blade. I'm going to put two on the shoulder pad here. Um, primarily you're going to want to imagine how this damage has been caused. So for me I want like two, uh, I don't know, like tyranid claws coming in. So you're going to grab your scalpel blade. You need to press quite hard on this. It doesn't matter whether the model is or isn't painted first off just as an FYI. Um, obviously I already have this model painted so I'm doing this but you could probably do this before the painting happens. Now in terms of the gouge marks um, you need to put in two lines so the first one goes down and then you'll see I've just put in my second one this is going to widen the width of the gouge and then I'm using the back of the scalpel blade here just to kind of clean that out. So now we've got that first one done in I'm just eyeing up where I want the second one and we're going to repeat exactly the same process. So your first line goes in, you have your scalpel blade at about 90 degrees to the model itself. And uh, I'm just putting in that deep gouge with the scalpel blade. Just clean it off a little. And then this one I'm just wanting slightly thinner, so I'm not going to put in the second line. But we're still going to clean it out with the back of this Stanley blade or the scalpel knife, depending on what you're using. And there we go. So dead simple, dead quick two gouges for us done and dusted so now we're done with the gouges it's on to the bullet impacts now i'm going to start off with the two mil drill bits this is for the larger caliber weapons things like uh you know machine gun rounds uh bolt guns uh that sort of thing uh you're really not wanting to go too far down onto this the point of the drill bit itself has like a diamond tip to it and you just wanted to go to that it's probably only one or two millimeters deep so you really don't need to make these too deep at all for them to have an impact on the model but you do want to make them as random as possible so i'm going to put three of these uh, larger caliber bullet holes bullet impacts into the model itself and then we'll switch over to the smaller caliber weapons so for this one i'm going to be using the one mil drill bit and it's the same process as well. You're not drilling a hole, you're just drilling like a, a strike point and impact. So they don't go deep into the model itself. They just go, you know, just under the surface. And this is why we're using the, the diamond um, part of the end of the drill as the guide for us. So this time round, I'm gonna have it in a line as if the, uh, the impacts have stitched across his armor here. So the first one's gone in second one and then I'll do one more and then we'll just add a couple of others around so same as with the gouges you don't want too many on here obviously I'm overloading this model because I'm showing you what we're doing but it's up to you where and how you want to implement this so now we've got those uh, impact marks set up we're now going to make the cracks in the armor and so when the bullet or shell impacts the armor obviously that force uh, cracks the armor and that's what we're trying to replicate on this so you're going to want to grab your scalpel blade now it's almost like going around in a clock face formation you can see there so you know like 12 o'clock one o'clock two o'clock three o'clock four o'clock and so on um you don't want to put too many of these in uh, but yet again you don't want to put too few you wanted to try and show the force of the impact and the fact that this has cracked the armor so i'd suggest at least 
five or six um, too many and it's just going to look too feathered so and too few and it's not going to look as as forceful of an impact so you're just going to go around each and every one of these and you're looking at putting in about five or six of these um, cracks around the bullet so you're just going to turn your scalpel blade and at each point press down and the scalpel blade will do the work for you so there we go that is all done the uh, bullet marks and the gouges all finished off now I focus primarily on that shoulder pad so next steps so let's look at how to go about getting this painted so our first step is to grab the iron hand steel which is a base color from Citadel and we're gonna paint in all of the the parts that we've drilled or cut out so this is where you've got the painted over uh, armor and then the bullet marks or the gouges have gone through that painted portion and then down into the under armor the unpainted part and so we're just going to paint in all that so it's all of the the impact craters and then the the fragmented lines around those and then also onto the uh, the gouges as well and we're just going to paint all through there don't worry if it goes up and over the top obviously that's just kind of representative of the fact that that paint has chipped off so it doesn't have to be too neat at this point we're going to go back in with colors and washes to tidy all this up but you're just going to paint all of those areas so the next step then is to grab some null oil gloss now we're using the gloss because the silver itself is quite shiny so obviously we're wanting to keep the shiny aspects of the silver when we're putting this null oil gloss on this is just going to add some really nice shadows into the model itself where the the pitting is from the the impacts of those bullets so we're just adding the the null oil gloss into all of these little crevices here um, for the bullet holes and the gouges as well it works exactly the same now we've let that null oil dry this is McCrag blue so this is our base color and I'm just tidying up the edges this works twofold so first off you tidy up all the edges where you've used the iron hands steel and then the second part of this is the fact that it adds shadow and definition in and around those impact craters so it's just McCrag blue or whatever your base color is and then we're just going to go around and tidy up those edges you're not wanting to put too much of this on it's just a, a fine little edge highlight around the outside of those silver craters and this just marries the the armor with then the the craters themselves so we're getting somewhere now next up i'm going to grab some rune fang steel so this is the lighter shade of silver and this is going to be a nice thin edge highlight right the way around the impact craters and then line highlights down the sides of the gouges and so this is just going to add a little bit more definition and kind of tidy up all of it and make those bullet craters really stand out so that's what we're aiming for here perfect we've reached that stage in the video where if you are liking this i'd just like you to remind you to like and subscribe to these videos where you can see more content like this every single week so like subscribe and make sure you turn on that bell notification as well thanks very much guys so if you wanted to leave those bullet craters and impacts as they are they look really good they look quite fresh though so what I wanted to do was just take a couple of the contrast paints this here is snake bite leather contrast and I'm just gonna add some detailing in and around the recesses of the crater it's just gonna add some aging to it it's quite a nice rich brown color and it's just gonna add some aging to those impact craters to make sure that they didn't look as if they happened directly today I mean, this sort of thing is entirely up to yourselves but um, if you are going to be doing this then it's just a quick line highlight in the deepest recesses of uh, the gouges and the, the bullet craters themselves if you do find that you've put too much on there then you can just wipe the excess away with your finger and that'll help to blend this into the model anyway so it all helps and despite all that I then realized that actually it looked a little bit too brown now it's up to you whether this effect is what you're wanting to go for the snake bite leather is going to make it look a little rusty and a little dirty I'm going in here with uh, black 10 plus contrast now and just dulling that down just a little bit 
to give uh, the the recesses just a little bit more definition on here and, and tie it back in with the, the black. But either which way, you can use either just the snake bite contrast or the, the black Templar or a mixture of both. Uh, but whichever way you're going to be doing it, um, obviously it's just going to be adding a little bit more variety to those um, bullet craters and the gouges and stop them looking so much like you know they, they happened yesterday. But there we go, so that is the completed model with the heavy battle damage. So this is how to do gouges and bullet craters or shell impacts. So you can use this on not just miniatures like this, uh, space marines or whatever other soldiers that you're going for. You can also use it on tanks and even scenery as well. So this looks you know, really strong, really solid. You can use it just on its own like this, or you can also marry it in with the techniques that we used on last week's episode with the light scratches that you can see just on the uh, the other side of the model. So if you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have been finding my streams or videos useful at all, I'd also just like to mention that the channel does have a Patreon page as well, link to which is just down below. Uh, if you've learned or enjoyed any of this, then all support's greatly appreciated as it allows me to continue to support you guys. Uh, channel Patreons receive various benefits such as requesting tutorial content or hourly to one-to-one -one hobby sessions with myself. We've got a fantastic Discord community as well. Um, and if any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support the channel and, and help me to make these tutorials for you guys, then uh, please check that out. In any case, a massive thank you to all of my Patreons, uh, without which I wouldn't be able to do this, and to you guys as well for watching. So thank you very much. I'll see you in next week's episode. Take care, and may your pots of paint never run out.